guys people saying it's easily easy listening without eric at the drums it's easy listening shine jesus shine all right god is good all the time the lord is risen it is good to be in the house of the lord amen every time we come into god's house we recognize that we are have fallen short of the glory of god in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone now is the time we go before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We humbly acknowledge our personal sinfulness. We confess our sins to God and beseech him in the name of Jesus to grant us remission of sin. So let's bow our heads, take a quiet, reflective moment, and confess our personal sins to God. Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment, but we are heartily sorry for it, and we sincerely repent of it, and we pray that of your boundless mercy you would forgive us for the sake of and in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's in his name we pray this. Amen. Upon a true confession of our heart to God, I announce the grace of God to all of you. And I tell you, he forgives you all of your sins. He calls you sons and daughters. He declares you righteous in his powerful name. That is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, church. Good evening, brother. Uh, yeah, so Scott Wells isn't here. And that means there's no stories about farms or farm animals. Uh, however, I do have a couple opinions on the matter of cats. Uh, we've had we have we we haven't had a lot of farm animals over the years, but we have had several cats. And I know lots of people have cats, and everybody is fond of their cat because the cat will come up and and want to be petted and purr at you, or maybe meow at you, or rub your hand, or sit in your lap. But the cat only does that when the cat wants to, right, right? And um, the cat will be very affectionate and loving towards you, but most of the time it's because they what? They want something, right? They want to be petted maybe or they want to be fed. Um, and we have a particular cat right now um, who if we leave our sliding door open just to crack, he really likes to get out, which he's not supposed to be out because he's supposed to be an inside cat. And um, the funny thing about the cat is once he gets out, it takes about five minutes before he really wants to come back in. And so uh, that's the funny thing about cats. They, they don't know what they want. Um, they like you as long as 
They want something from you. They're very independent, right? They think they run the house. You have no chance of convincing that cat that it does not run the house, right? So you see where I'm going with this, right? Who, who does that sound like? It sounds like us comp- when we're considering our relationship with the Lord, right? We, uh, we're, we're, we're very affectionate when we want something. We're very independent. We really can't be convinced that we don't run things. And about the minute we get outside and find out it's cold or rainy or not very pleasant outside, what do we do? We want back in. So um, I'm just thankful that uh, as a cat, if you picture yourself as a cat, we have a cat owner uh, who is merciful and always lets us come back in. Amen. This is the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He's above all things, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. setting sun, His love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on, His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, forever God. God is faithful.
people said you may be seated do you guys go to church man that's fantastic what's the name of your church that's right if somebody were to ask you what is your church all about what are we going to say because if we are not about that amen every sermon up until Christmas Eve is going to be based in the scriptures on the Advent devotionals. If you have not gotten an Advent devotional, you need to get an Advent devotional. You say, how do I get an Advent devotional? I'll tell you how you get an Advent devotional. You go into that wicker basket back there and you grab them. We have plenty, plenty. So this isn't even a one per family. This is a get an Advent devotional time, all right? You got that, Keith? Are you going to get a devotional? All right, brother. <laughs> Uh, and so every sermon Sundays and Wednesdays on those Advent devotionals. Men's prayer breakfast this Saturday, 8 a.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. Men's prayer breakfast, E72, 1030. We're going to go out, knock on doors, pray with people. This is Saturday at 1030. 130, we are going to have our last C.S. Lewis Bible study on mere Christianity. We're going to be starting screw tape letters on the 17th of December. 
And mark your calendars. Put it in indelible ink. December 10th at what time, people? 1 p.m. The El Coos Annual Christmas Party. And the kids have been working hard. We have 19 young children set on December 10th to sing praise to God and entertain us grown folk. It's going to be a wonderful time. So as a potluck, bring something to uh, share as well. Christmas services, December 24th, 5 and 7 p.m. Same services, uh, December 25th, 10 a.m. You know, I heard a little birdie tell me that a lot of churches are closed on Christmas Day. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not Elkus, baby. No. December 25th, 10 a.m. I'm going to see all your smiling faces and all these disappointed children waiting to okay? <laughs> open up these kids. Mama, please. We were just here last night. Do it, parents. I'm telling you, it'll be fun. Uh, all, right. all right, children, come on up. Come. Now is the time to see a puppet. Come on up. Come on up, puppet. Come on up. Hannah Banana, I'm waiting for you. Hannah Banana. What's up, Luke? How you doing, buddy? Oh, Hannah Banana said. She said. You do, you're not allowed to be sad in the house of the Lord. It's going to be fine. All right, on the count of three, we're going to say, wake up, Angus. One, two, three. No, you don't get to start again. No. No. Shh. He beat you like five times. All right, very good. <clears throat> well, it, this here says good morning, but it is not morning, so I'm going to say good evening. I thank you for saying good evening, and thank you for overlooking Mr. Farber's copy and paste errors as well. Yeah. <laughs> we, All right. It's, it's truly appreciated. <laughs> uh, I, I had a bonny, bonny evening to you as well. Oh, okay. Oh, dear. I got to tell you, I'm not really feeling very bonny vibe from you right now, Angus. Oh, don't be silly, Pastor. Why, of course, everything is grand, simply grand. Oh, dear. I think something is definitely bothering you, Angus. <sighs> no, forget it. It's nothing. <laughs> Come on now. I think we all want to know what's bothering you. Do we want to know what's bothering Angus? Yeah, we want to know what's the matter with Angus. <sighs> oh, very well. If you must know, I've got a new stallmate. Ooh, a stallmate. Like a roommate for humans? More like a cellmate in a gel, if you ask me. Oh, oh boy. So who's the uh, uh, new stallmate? Well, if you can believe it, it's Paisley the Peg. You know, Mrs. Farber is uh, something of an animal expert, if you did not know that. Went to university for it and everything. And she's liable to tell you that pigs are supposed to be clean animals. Is that right? Well, Angus, you have a different opinion? Do you lies! Know? All lies, Pastor! Lies worthy of Satan himself. Well, surely it isn't as serious as that. Not serious. Not serious, he says. All right. All right. Why don't you calm down? Tell us what's so terrible, Angus. <sighs> you know, Pastor, I don't think I ask for very much. A little common courtesy, perhaps taking the trouble to pick up after oneself. Not turning one's home into a pigsty. Literally. Uh, okay. But apparently that's too much to ask. So Paisley moves into the stall, and what's the first thing she does? I, uh, I don't know. Well, the keepers were kind enough to leave her a pile of straw for a warm bed. And does Paisley bother to keep her straw in a neat pile or tidy up after herself? Well, does she? I'm actually l literally afraid to say anything at this point. No, she does <laughs> not. The, she scatters the straw all about the stall. And it gets past her. What's worse, it gets onto my half of the stall. My half, Pastor. And we made a very clear agreement about whose half of the stall was whose. 
My goodness. Don't act like this isn't serious, Pastor. <laughs> this is a boundaries issue. All right. Okay, sorry. You're almost destroying the entire stage here. You're that upset. I am that upset. <laughs> and, by, and, and by boundaries, I mean there, there is a literal boundary. We actually drew a line on the floor and everything. Oh, right. Got it. Got it. Uh, oh, and that is not all of it. Have you ever seen a pig eat? Come to think of it, I don't believe I have. Well, then consider yourself richly blessed, my friend. Trust me. Is not a sight you can unsee. I had no idea. Aye, unless you've ever had a complete slob for a roommate, you've got no idea what I'm going through right now. Well, if you didn't know, I did live in a fraternity house in college. Aye, well, then perhaps you do know. <laughs> uh, but then so, of all people, Pastor, you can see my life is basically ruined. Now, just a minute here, Angus. Don't you think that's a little too strong to say that your life is ruined? Oh, it's easy for you to say. I get it. It's inconvenient and maybe a little unpleasant to deal with a difficult person. But we need to remember the big picture here. The big picture? Yes, the big picture. Uh, the big... Oh, you mean the painting on the side of the barn that's got all our pictures painted on it and the big sign that says, visit the animals here? No, I don't mean the literal picture. What I mean is even though we have some annoying things to deal with, we need to remember that heaven is our true home. You sound a little bit like Mrs. Farber's grandmother. She had a saying she used to say quite often. She would say, don't sweat the small stuff. Well, it sounds like Mrs. Farber's grandmother was a wise woman. Aye. Aye. That is exactly what I'm saying. We just need to keep things in perspective and understand if we have Jesus and heaven as our home in the end, what else really matters? Well, you do make a convincing point. Pastor, and uh, I suppose I have learned something from this conversation. So you learned how important it is to keep our focus on heaven, our eternal home, and not get too upset about small details that annoy us here on earth? Uh, I, well, sure, that too. But mostly I learned what literally is the most overused word in the English language. Oh, you mean literally. literally. Aye, that's the one. Yes. <laughs> well, be that as it may, Angus, it is literally time to pray right now. Let's pray. Say, dear God. Dear God, help me. Help me. Keep heaven in my mind. Keep heaven in my mind. So I don't sweat the small stuff. So I don't sweat the small stuff. Amen. Amen. Go on the heck. Go. I he's got mad cow disease. I he does. He's definitely a mad cow. He's a mad cow. He's a mad Highland cattle. Uh, how you doing, buddy? All right. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you. You are a good. A holy and awesome and a gracious God, I pray as always that this message is a message that you, God, have for your people. Father, I, I pray that this would move past the head to the heart and truly from the heart into our lives and conversations. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I've, I've got a funny, uh, funny to me at least, a funny beginning to this message. I think you've got the general twist of it, or gist of it, excuse me. From the puppet show, it, it, it basically is, don't sweat the small stuff. And one funny thing as a pastor, so you write this sermon, I finished it yesterday, uh, different things I had, I had to do today, and then it, the theme of the message is don't sweat the small stuff. So guess what happened? Lots of small stuff I was sweating. Lots of repenting I was doing. Lots of little things that got in my way uh, last night, today, this afternoon. Anyway, Jesus is a funny guy. Uh, I would like you to open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 15, 1 through 13. Romans 15, 1 through 13. Romans 15, 1 through 13. The Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans. It's entitled Romans because he's writing to a group of believing people in Rome. Now, a little bit of context before we read this. Rome was a bustling city, and it was filled with all sorts of people. And the church at Rome, the believers, and it's very important that we understand that Paul here is writing to people that believe in Jesus Christ. The church itself were filled with, was filled with Jewish believers in Jesus, and Gentile believers in Jesus. If you don't know what that difference is, the Jews were the people that God chose in the Old Testament, beginning with Abraham, to be the people of God. Gentile is any non-Jew. 
And throughout their history, they were in deep-seated hostility towards one another. Since Jesus came, Gentiles and Jews were called to inhabit not simply the same space, but the same Lord, and be unified and live in harmony in the church together. And the Apostle Paul is going to address how they ought to do that. Romans 15, 1 through 13. We who are strong have an obligation. Everybody say that word for me, obligation. obligation. If you're obligated to do a thing, what does that mean? Okay, this begins very important. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the fail- failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore I will praise you amongst the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, O you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come even he who arises to rule the Gentiles in him Will the Gentiles hope? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I think it's very important before we attack the scripture here to remember how much these two groups of people hated each other. Jews would not eat with Gentiles, Jews would not fellowship with Gentiles, Gentiles would not eat with Jews. They wouldn't sit with Jews. They were hostile to one another. If you want to get a taste of it, turn on the news and look at how Jews and Arabs in the Middle East think of one another. That gives you a taste. God actually had to show Peter. This is post-Pentecost. Peter had the Holy Spirit God had to give Peter a vision, three of them to be exact, before Peter would even dare agree. Peter, the apostle Peter, would even dare agree to go into a Gentile's house and sit down and eat with them. This is how much these two groups of people despised one another. You would think that since Christ came, that dividing wall of hostility would be torn. You know, when Jesus died, literally, the veil in that temple was torn in two. We were no longer separated from God, and in Christ, supposed to be no longer separated, what? From each other. Regardless of culture, regardless of heritage. But you were dealing with people who were adults, who grew up from infancy, hating those folk. And those folk hated them. So you were growing up in a culture and in a world where you were used to avoiding and despising. And now that Jesus has died and rose again, praise God, amen. Now we're supposed to be, as long as they believe in Jesus, what? We're supposed to be good. We're supposed to sit on the church council together. We're supposed to be co-elders. We're supposed to worship together. We're supposed to hold hands at the communion table together. What? It's hard. And Paul is here addressing the difficulty that they were having living together as brothers and sisters in Christ. He starts by saying, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. This is what was happening. The Gentiles thought every day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, alike. The Jews grew up believing that the seventh day, Saturday, was holier than the other six. And you couldn't work. You had some Gentile folk 
They were buying and selling on Saturday. You had some Jewish folk that were Christians. Remember, remember the context. All Christians. They refused. But they were hostile toward one another. You had Gentile folk having trip feast and pig roasts. And you had Jewish people who were like, Oy, that's terrible. You know, uh, they, they wouldn't do it because of the way they grew up and the way they were taught. So half the church was having a pig roast while the other half of the church was praying for those having the pig roast. And there was hostility. So Paul understands that those things don't matter anymore. Christ has fulfilled it. They're not big deals. But have you ever heard, well, Farber said it, or Angus said it, excuse me, not to tell you who Angus is. <laughs> Angus said it, don't sweat the small stuff. Or small foxes spoil the vine. Have you noticed in your life that it's usually not the big things? It's usually the repetitive small things. The petty annoyances, usually, that bring division. What Paul is saying here, you guys need to get along. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproach of those who reproached you fell on me. Basically, what the Apostle Paul says is, if it's not a big deal, then it's not what? A big deal. Give in. Give them what they want. Because it's a big deal to them. You who know better ought to simply acquiesce. Isn't that decidedly un-American? And that's what the Apostle Paul basically says. I read a post on someone's Facebook in our congregation. It's going to sound self-serving, but it's really not meant to be that. And it was about the post itself. It was very nice. It was about how you can bless your pastor. Well, one of the things was, this is how you can bless your pastor. Forgive him. Forgive your pastor. And then underneath it said, now we don't mean if your pastor, I'm going to use Chris's language, it, their language was much fancier than this. Not to mean if he's trifling, like if he's committing adultery, if he's preaching heresy, uh, or if he's doing something that you need to discipline him heavily or involve the denomination or involve the criminal justice system. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is he forgets to send you the text. He says he'll be over, something came up, he forgot to tell you that he couldn't make it. It's that last-minute cancellation, that irksome conversation in the hallway when he's distracted. You had something important. Have you ever noticed that it's those kind? And what hit me, you guys are great, that this is not, I'm, I'm not addressing anything personal. What I'm saying is what it brought to my mind was nine times out of ten, people are no longer in harmonious relationship with one another not because of what? Something big. It usually is something irksome, irritating, petty, that gets under your skin, then it blows up to something big because you and I simply can't what? Let it go. We simply can't give them what they want. This happens all the time, even in churches. You want, so, true stories that I'm about to tell you. Talk about petty. Two small congregations that could not afford to stay alive financially and afford a full-time pastor. But together, they could. All right. Well, hold on to your britches, folks. This is the seriousness of what was going on. One church said the Lord's Prayer and said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The other church said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. They couldn't agree on which one to say. So they both shut their doors, nobody got called, and both congregations died. Or, this happens even more than you even care to imagine. 
Two small congregations cannot survive financially. But together, they could. But you got some little old biddies over here whose great-grandpappy built that building. And you got some little biddies over here whose great-grandpappy built that building. Great-grandpappy dead. Great-grandpappy in heaven. Great-grandpappy don't care about those buildings. But the little biddies do. So they make big old arguments. We got we to gotta come to this building because my great-grandpappy built this one. We got to come to this building because my great-grandpappy built this one. Neither one sells. They don't come together. They successfully die, have to sell off the property to some realtor, and they build condos on that property. Are the little old biddies happy now? What happens is the non-sinful, petty, ridiculous annoyances get up under our skin. We won't let go of our way. It destroys relationships. When what the Apostle Paul says, we who are strong, who know it's not a big deal, we're actually supposed to, we are under obligation to do what? Okay. Okay, forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses. Paul continues, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Basically, once again, he says, everything written in the past is for our encouragement. So, welcome as Christ welcomed you. Welcome the newcomer. Welcome the strange person. Welcome the weak as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. You know that guy that can't keep his mouth shut, but he loves Jesus? I know that guy. I live with that guy. I am that guy. The idea here is, yeah, this is annoying. So if you've ever seen my wife, it's funny. She'll be singing right here, right? She'll be like, Jesus, I love Jesus. Jesus is wonderful. That's what she's singing. And then if you'll see this. You'll see this. She'll, first, she'll, she'll make this move. She'll turn this up. Now what this is doing is hearing the voices because I'm standing right here screaming my bloody head off. That's what's going on. Jesus, 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 I love Jesus, 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 Jesus. Then she'll step back. Jesus. You can watch out for it. You'll see it. Uh, and then she'll step back like this. Jesus. Because I'm annoying her. Is what's, what's really taking place is I'm annoying her. Because I'm off key and I'm yelling loud and I'm singing. It's funny. This is what happened this one time. One time it happened. This is the way that I remember the story. If you remember it differently, we can uh, argue about it at home. Uh, all right. So, so she said something like, you are throwing me off. It's, do they, she says, do they keep your microphone on? And I said, I don't think they do. I said, they must. This is ridiculous. This is unbelievable how loud you are. So then I was like, well, I can't. It's Jesus, man. I'm gonna, it's Jesus. I'm going to sing the way I'm going to sing because it's Jesus. So I stood back there. And I, I was singing back there. And then she was like, she was like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Well, <laughs> what she saw was I just made my husband stand back there so that he can sing the way he wants to sing because he's going to yell and sing about Jesus. Now I feel bad. So then stand right there and I'll just back up and turn this off. And she doesn't say anything anymore. Okay. It's a perfect example of how petty annoyances, what, can get in the way. And then, it wasn't even a big argument. Then it's, you feel bad. You're like, well, I didn't want that to happen. You know what I mean? And this is the kind of thing that takes place. When the goal is to live in harmony, that's the goal. To be in harmony. 
not to get our way, not to get what we want, but to be in harmony with our brothers and sisters in Christ, knowing we have eternity with each other. You can't tolerate me singing now. Just wait till glory, baby. <laughs> I'll sound as good as Graham in glory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We have vegan farm owners, Sierra Leone and nurses, Nigerians. We got gun toters. We got retired cops. We got former drug addicts. We got former people in sexual sin. We got all walks of life here. We got black people. We got white people. We got old people. We got young people. We got big people. We got small people. We got all sorts of folk at the Lutheran Church of Our Savior. We all grew up very differently, and some of us grew up saying, those people are not what? My people. Do you know that when, once you come to Christ, those people are your people. These people are your people. Because nothing else matters other than Jesus. He is the one who died for us. He's the one who rose again for us. He's the one that's coming back for us. I can't tell you how large, thick, and unbreakable the division between Jew and Gentile was. It was huge. But Jesus broke it to bring these people together. That gets to the heart of something that popped out at me. Most of the time, when we demand our own way, it's because we're not thinking about eternity. When you're demanding your own way, what are you thinking about? Yourself, and you're thinking about right here and right now. You're not thinking about eternity. You aren't thinking about the return of Christ. You aren't thinking about the new heavens and the new earth. You're not really thinking about your neighbor at all. We're just thinking about us, our desires, right here, right now. That's what we're thinking about when we demand our way. Now, remember, I'm not talking about demanding God's way. I'm talking about demanding our way. And let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff that you're, <laughs> that's really just your way with spiritual brushes on it. There's a lot of stuff like that that God don't care about. You care about it. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Again, I want to emphasize, yeah, I already did that. I'm, I'm simply, a lot of times, we're sweating the small stuff. And we ought not. We ought to be thinking about the hope we have. See, this is an Advent sermon. The point here is Advent. What does Advent mean? Coming. You're supposed to be focusing on Jesus Christ is going to come back. Here's how you know. When Christ comes back, am I going to care about this? Whatever the this that you're all up in a bunch about. When Christ comes back, am I going to care about this? If the answer is no, let it go. When Christ comes back, are you going to care about it? It's a very important question. So let's practice this thought. Practice this thought with your husbands. Practice this thought with your wives. Practice this thought with your children. Practice this thought with the people around you, this one. If it's that important to you, then okay. It's more important to me to be in harmony with you because of our mutual hope than getting my own way. It's time to begin practicing that. Hey, hey, okay. If it's that important to you, not if it's that important to you, then okay. Not that. Not that. You're laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's why you're laughing. So that you can go back to your corner and go, I gave him what he wanted. All right. No. It's really, if it's that important, okay. Okay. All right. All good. Let's move forward. Christ is real. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. What's hope? Hope is not a vain wish. In the world, it's a vain wish. I hope it doesn't rain. I hope the sun shines on our wedding. I hope this couple makes it. Those aren't things that you're sure about, right? 
In the Bible, hope is a future concrete reality. So when it says, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The point is, I can sweat, I mean, excuse me, I can let go of the small stuff because my hope is not here. My hope is not in being right. My hope is not in getting my way. My hope is not in everything going the way I want it to go. My hope's in Jesus, and that's a concrete hope. He's coming back. We're going to have eternity. I'll be able to watch what I want on TV on that day. I'll be able to do it on that day. So I'm going to let them have their way. It's a concrete future reality. We don't have it, but we will. And I want to remind us, just with a few scriptures, of that reality. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this town, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. I will be his God. And he will be my son. When that happens, is this going to be worth it? As it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. When you see it, is this going to be important? Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, the mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your your sting. At that last trumpet, is this going to be important? I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. When you experience that, is this going to matter? Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. When he takes you to glory, will it matter? But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. What's our hope? Total forgiveness and peace, where we walk hand in hand with our Lord. What is our hope? No more pain, no more death, no more weeping, and no more mourning. What is our hope? Eternal, physical, resurrected life on a new heaven and a new earth. What is our hope? Total, harmonious relationships with brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus himself taking us to be with him. We're supposed to care that that annoying woman or that jerk of a guy is with us. So letting her talk and giving him his way might just, in the long run, what? Be worth it. Because it's more important that they know Jesus than we get our petty annoyances dealt with. That's what Advent, we look forward to the hope of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. time. Father, we thank you. You are a good, a holy, an awesome, and a gracious God. And I, Father, forgive us for so often demanding our way, the way it's always been. Forgive our sins. Wash us clean. Help us bear with one another to live in harmony and in peace with one another. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our plates are in the back for our tithes and offerings. 
or of course you can get, give online at lcoos.org. Before the prayers, because sometimes it always flutters out of my head, so I don't want that to happen. I am going to invite up the Tester family now instead of after the prayers. I told you after the prayers, I misled you. I'm going to invite you up now. Dayton Jason Tester is going to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit today. Oh, look, look, they were planning on it. See what I do when I just surprise people like this? <laughs> They're like, you told us after the prayers. They have to bear with, those who are strong have to bear with weak pastors. See that? This is in motion. There we go. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Make a little half circle right here. Come on. You're going to make it. So this is the Tester family. Come on up. This is uh, Dakota. This is Dallas, whom you know. This is Dayton, whom you might not know. This is Dad, this is Jason, Mom, Destiny, and you know Grandma and Grandpa. All right, okay. <laughs> Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. We also learn from the Word of God that we are conceived and born sinful and are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent His Son, Jesus, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Dayton, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your chest as one being marked by Christ the crucified. Now, because Dayton is too young to answer for himself, it's your task as parents and sponsors to answer on his behalf. Do you renounce the devil, all his works and all his ways? If so, say, I do renounce them. I do, renounce them. do you believe in God the Father Almighty? If so, say, I believe in God the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? If so, say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? If so, say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I in the Holy Spirit. After Dayton has been baptized, you are at all times to remember him in your prayers. Put him in mind of his baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid, especially if he should lose his parents, that he would be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God, be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and that as he grows in years, you place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, bring him to the services of God's house, and provide for his further instruction in the Christian faith. That he come to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and thus abiding in his baptismal grace, and in communion with the church, he may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This, then, do you intend to gladly and willingly do? If so, say, I intend with the help of God. Well, then, Jason, just uh, bow Dayton's head down here. <laughs> Dayton, Jason Tester, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> there you go. That's yours. Let's pray for Dayton. Gracious Heavenly Father, dearest Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we pray for Dayton. We pray that, uh, that you, in such a simple act, you've placed your name on him. I pray that he grows to be the young man and the man that you call him to be. Be with Jason and Destiny as they raise their children in the admonition of the Lord. And be with Ken and Teresa as godparents and grandparents that they encourage this family in their relationship with you. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray this. Amen. Let's welcome Dayton into the family of God. Amen. Now, the second best thing is what? 
That's right. I know it's here. That's all. I know it's late, but please, we're going to have some cake over there. Please welcome this family and welcome Dayton. Amen. Right, let, please rise for the prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God according to their needs. Let's bow our heads. Our God in heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the precious Christian fellowship which we are now enjoying in your name. We thank you for the privilege of worshiping you, the true and only God, and for the privilege of hearing your word by which we grow in faith towards a better understanding of your love. Give us all a sincere longing to assemble here in your name to worship you and to be edified by the preaching and teaching of your word. Heavenly Father, as we look upon the weak, we must confess that we've not always obeyed your word and commandments, nor sought to follow the perfect example of our Lord Jesus. Our days have been all too often marked by failure to do the good things which you delight to see in your adopted children. How often we have sinned and deserved only your wrath, but we ask you to forgive our sins for the sake of your Son, whom you sent to die on the cross for us. Jesus, help us cling to you forever in true faith as our Savior and Lord, who loved us and redeemed us from our sins with your own precious blood. Through the word of salvation, which we've heard here today, increase our faith and deepen our appreciation of your sacrifice on Calvary. May our lives more and more reflect your love which has taken over in our hearts. Guide us and our loved ones on our way through life and guard and defend us from every evil. Holy Ghost, open our hearts to the word of truth. Cause us to mature in the faith and to have a deeper love for our God and for one another. Give to all of us who worship here the grace to praise our God continuously with our whole lives by pursuing only those matters and desiring only those things which are righteous and good. Grant us the gifts of patience, kindness, and gentleness, that we may help family and neighbor, that we may be forgiving, that we may live honestly with all people. May our voices lifted together this hour serve not only to glorify you, our God, but also mutually to comfort and strengthen one another. We pray for the circuited outreach. We pray for instrumentalists. We pray for the special needs of Casty, Crystal, Eric, Rochelle, Justin, Rick, Doris, Mary, Rebecca, Bonnie, Lori, Wendy, Daniel, Lori, Aaron, Casey, Steve, Rich, and Helena, Rosa, Jim, Seneda, Nathan, Tiffany, Carmen, Antonio, Ivan, and Luz, Frank, Arnie, Nikki, Silberio, Olga, Heo, Patricia, Crystal, Kara, Buffy, Chad, Valerie, Jim, Jimmy, Marsha, Ruth, Caleb, Brendan, Kimberly, Kristen, Charles, Ryan, Kathy, Tim, Cecilia, Joe, and Donald. Kay, Bernie, Mary, Larry, Billy, Mike, Patty. Teresa, Ken, Carrie, Joanne, Scott, Frank, Cindy. Frank Nelson, Frank Ray, Kathy, Joe, Corolla, Larry C., Carol, Doris, Carrie, Ambrosia. Ambrose, excuse me, heal them. Turn Eric and John, Mark, Stuart, Tom, Chuck, Dave, Linda, Lawrence, Chris, Greg, George. Brian, Justin, Stephen, Ricky, Joey, Heather, Whitney, Justin, Lonnie, Chris, Doris, and Larry, Haley, Becca, Jesse, Whitney, Willie, Gabrielle, Kim, Kiel, Sally, and Rusty, turn them to you for salvation. And for the families of James Wine, George Kaiser, Mary C., Fred Davis, and the Richard family, all individuals who lost loved ones, comfort them in their sorrows, surround them with your angelic host, turn them to the cross and the empty tomb. For our president, our congress, and judiciary, for our local officials, our governor, our state legislature, and our county commissioners, for all newly elected officers, I pray that you would imbue them with wisdom, turn their hearts toward you, and may they lead rightly. For our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, marines, coast guardsmen, and civilian forces around the globe. For our police officers, our firemen, and EMS, may they act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Jesus, you testify to this sinful world, and you make an amazing promise. 
you say, I am coming soon. We, your people, look up toward heaven with a smile on our faces. We respond with a simple prayer. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We look forward to the day when the sky rolls back as a scroll, the moon of blood, and the sun of darkness, because on that day, we rise again, live forever with you in everlasting blessedness and peace. But if you tarry, I do pray that we live authentic lives of Christian love, that we love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, bless those who curse us, pray for those who mistreat us, and in this way, show the true love of God to our hurting world. Hear us, Father, as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you. For the forgiveness of all of your sins, drink this in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Choose to humble and raise them high. Do you choose the weak and make them strong? Do you heal a brokenness inside? And give us life, the same love that set the captives free, the same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. Spread the heavens wide. The same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same God 
that spread the heavens wide. The same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. You take the faithless one aside and speak the words you are mine you call the cynic and the proud come to me now the same love that set the captives free the same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name you are calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens wide. The same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. You're calling you're calling, you're calling us to the cross. You're calling, you're calling, you're calling us to the cross. You're calling, you're calling, you're calling us to the cross. And welcome the testers and uh, the newly baptized Dayton and have a piece of cake before you leave. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord our God Almighty.
peace and serve the Lord.